Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Just greetings, beloved. It's so good to have you here with me, Miriam Smith Stevens of the Thankful Revolution Legacy Group LLC. Today, I am going to share a transformational Tuesday message. Um, what has come to me out of a prayer morning session is the word obedience. And the message is a heart of obedience. So I just want to go ahead and share that. Um, I have a little conference a little later. So we're going to get into it, shall we? Let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come before you. I come before you today with hearts that are open and yearning for transformation. Yes, yes. Cleanse us, renew us, guide us into a deeper understanding of what it means to have a heart of obedience rooted in your word, your ways, and your will. And let your spirit fill our hearts, granting us strength to walk in your light and wisdom. Just let every word shared here today bring your, you glory, illuminate your ways, your word. May it encourage us and all of the listeners to live with purpose, to live a life with purpose, with passion, regardless of the pain we may be in or coming out of. God, you have a reason for us. Thank you, Lord. Let us be obedient to your perfect plan. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice, because it was your perfect love of obedience, your heart of obedience, that we have the right and the privilege to come boldly before the throne of grace, our Father, empowered by your Holy Spirit to say welcome, welcome into this place. Yes, Lord, and let our hearts be transformed. Transplant our hearts, Lord. Let it be your heart. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. And I want to just share a, a song, a few songs that God laid on my heart. One that um, comes right out of Psalms 20, uh, 51, verses 10 through 12. Um, but prior to it, it's just a thanksgiving. I just want to thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord, for everything. You've done for me, created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me, restore the joy of my salvation, O oh Lord, so my mouth will show forth thy praise, create in me a clean, obedient heart. Yes, Lord. I welcome you into this place. I welcome you into this broken vessel. You desires of your people to be willing and obedient. Yes, yes, Lord, we lift our hands, yes, we lift our hearts to usher up you in our voice of praise and worship unto you. We lift our hands, Lord, we lift our eyes. We offer up the sacrifice of praise that is based on 
Gary Oliver's song, Worship Leader, Extraordinaire. But also the prior part of it is creating me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. That's a little song of worship unto the Lord that God gave me years ago, based on Psalms 51. So again, welcome, welcome everyone. I'm Miriam Smith-Stevens of the Thankful Revolution Legacy Group, LLC. And we're here about reclaiming a person's voice. We want to rebound from trauma, renew our minds, and resuscitate our lives so that we can rewrite our life stories. And as we dive into this message today, we want to learn a little bit about what it means to have a heart of obedience. And like I said, we're drawing from Psalms 51, 10 through 12. That'll be our foundation. But as God leads, we'll go and follow. <laughs> And we just pray against any distractions, any type of hindrances, roadblocks that would try to prevent this message from coming forth in Holy Spirit. You take the lead. Let the hearers of your word, the ear gates be open, primed to receive your word as your sheep from the good shepherd. And everything that is a blockage that's trying to prevent the seed to be sown in our hearts so that we can have a life altering transformation that is destroyed even now in the name of Jesus. So let's look a little bit with the backstory of Psalms 51 10. In Psalms 51, David is uh, King David, or David is pouring out his heart to God in repentance <laughs> after his moral failure with Bathsheba. Basically, he set up Bathsheba's husband to be killed in the front lines of an war because he, he lusted after Bathsheba. He wanted Bathsheba for himself. So he said, I got to get her husband out the way so I can have her. And so when all that was said and done and he got what he wanted, the prophet Nathan came to him and just called him out, put him, called him out on the carpet. Put it out there on Front Street. And David had to recognize his wrongdoings, the depths of his transgression. And he really just, hey, you know, instead of making an excuse like some of times we do, but God, you know, they did this to me and they did this to me. Okay, what did you do in this situation? You know, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord. There's no rocks that. I can throw, and, and Jesus had the right to throw rocks at the woman that was caught in adultery, but everybody else had to leave. So what David had to say when confronted by the prophet Nathan was, hey, I'm, I'm repenting. I ask earnestly for forgiveness. And that's Psalms 51, 10 through 12 plea for the transformation, creating me a clean heart, oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. David longs for a purified heart and a steadfast spirit to live obediently. A powerful reminder that true obedience comes from an intentional, internal transformation that only God can accomplish. So let's think about five grace keys. And these five grace keys are pointing us towards a heart of obedience. If you think about it, we need to seek cleansing. That's what Psalms 51, 10 said. Create in me a clean heart, Father God. Renew a right spirit within me. So as we think about, you know, starting off in our own personal transformation, because God loves us, his grace is sufficient for us. This first key is we can ask in the affirmation and pray. We could say, Lord, I know I'm a new cre creation in Christ. I seek cleansing daily, aligning my heart with your will, God. And your prayer, a short prayer could be of your heart, creating me a clean heart within me. Don't let anything hinder my obedience from you. Another grace key is a grace for humility. You know, James 4.10 talks about this. And it's hard today because everybody wants to get their point across. Everybody wants to be right. 
you got to make your point and you got to have the last word. But sometimes we just need to approach people and God and ourselves humbly, you know. 4.10 and James says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. A lot of times we want to get to be the first person. We want to get to that status of greatness. And basically our approach needs to be God. I'm, I'm humble before you. I'm open before you. Do what you need to do in my life. Show me me. Put the mirror on my face on Front Street. And you, Lord, I know you'll lift me up in the right way, in the manner that you want me to be lifted. So in your affirmation, you can say, I submit my pride, <laughs> my agenda, and I choose humility that leads to obedience. Your prayer can be, Father, humble my heart and lift me according to your purpose. Another grace key is to trust in God's guidance. You know, my favorite scripture, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding and your affirmation. You commit to trusting God this day. I trust you. I trust you, Lord, in your ways over mine. I know you guide me perfectly. I trust you. My prayer is, God, I lean not on my own understanding, but trust in you to guide my steps. When we're getting into having an obedient heart or a heart of obedience, it does require these initial grace points, clean, seeking a clean heart, coming humbly before the Lord and everybody else, trusting God, you know, not our logic, not our reasoning, not our own understanding. And then even going into perseverance. A lot of times when we're seeking after God, uh, want to change a habit, uh, engaging in a program, it takes perseverance. You, you just can't do a one and done sometimes. It, it takes time. So Galatians 6, 9 says, let us don't grow weary. I'm putting it in my vernacular, but let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Let us not. I, I remember a song. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. <laughs> I don't know. I know I'm dating myself, but I'm sure a lot of you all and in choirs and singers, um, they you can relate. And our affirmation in this particular grace of perseverance is, I am empowered by God to persevere, to walk in obedience, despite the challenges. Yeah, there's going to be distractions. Every time we commit ourselves to doing what God wants us to do, boom, there you go in your face, something that's going to uh, distract you, a phone call, an email, uh, the child coming in your room, you know, banging on your bathroom door, wherever you're trying to go in your prayer closet, it's trying to be bombarded with distractions, hindrances. But we got to not grow weary in doing good. Because we know in due season, we're going to reap if we don't give up. So we pray, Lord, grant me the strength <laughs> to persevere, remaining obedient and faithful. Lord, let your joy be my strength. Let your joy be my strength so I can get through these moments, these sessions, these minutes, these acts of obedience. Continue to let me persevere. And part of your grace point is the grace for transformation. Yeah, when we approach God and we truly just come open, repentant, for asking forgiveness, just recognizing that, you know, we can't do it on of our own strength, of our own reasoning, of our own will and volition. We need you, God. We need your grace. Grace meaning uh, uh, Jesus. <laughs> Basically, Jesus is our grace, our love, our, our redeemer, our savior, our strength, our hope. We need grace for transformation. Romans 12, 2 says, be transformed 
by the renewing of your mind. And, you know, part of the tenets of the thankful revolution is we need a renewed mind. We need to have it washed. There's so much that we can take in from our birth of existence until our passing away and transitioning from this particular planet or this realm. And there's so much information, so much news, so much chaos, so much word, 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 people speaking in your ear, so much. And a lot of times we just got to take a pause, take a sila, a pause (laughs) and say, God, I I just want to hear your voice. And God says, he to have an ear. Let him hear what the spirit is saying to his church, his people, his royal people, his royal people, his chosen generation. And it takes starts with a renewing of our mind, with our attitude, with our soul. Our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. Washing that, cleansing that, getting all the pollutants of what we've experienced in our socialization of just being a part of humanity. So we ask, Lord, you know, Romans 12 to be transformed. God gave this as a as a directive. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's not an option. <laughs> so in our affirmations, we say, I am transformed daily, renewed by God's word and spirit. And then your prayers transform my mind, Father God. Let me think differently. Let me have an attitude of transformation, a focus of a, of a heart that's after you. Transform my mind, God. Let me be aligned and in sync with your heart and your will. Let me be aligned and in sync with your heart and will. And when we're really going towards this transformational prayer and plea, wanting to have a heart of obedience, you know, this is real life, real daily living. We got to face. It's not such a spooky spiritual situation of existence. This is reality. What are we actually facing? What are we going through? So just kind of share a couple of eight life lessons for real life obedience opportunities. For example, maybe you face weakness, honestly. I mean, maybe you're just not feeling like you're strong and I, and we've been there. It's okay not to be okay. I mean, maybe you've dealt with, uh, let's keep it real, dealing with sexual addictions, food addictions, with uh, lying habitually, gossiping, whatever it is. Maybe you're violent, you know, maybe you didn't mean to hit your partner, but you, you know, ask for forgiveness that first hit. But after the 1000th hit of them to them towards them, it's like you can't restrain yourself and you need help. Well, this is real life, people. These are things that we're dealing with when we're facing temptations. We need to really just be open and honest and admit our struggles to the to God. Instead of just justifying it, like, I'm sorry, you know, I did that. I know that, you know, I grew up with this and that, and this is what I was shown. And yeah, maybe we saw this in our parents or in the people that took care of us as we were growing up. But that doesn't mean we have to be that way. So my reflection would be in what area, you know, just think about it. What is the area that we're struggling with to obey God? And really, you know, in your prayer, in your openness, in your honesty, in your humility, in your seeking, without being weary, you ask God, what small steps can I take towards surrender? Instead of making an excuse for acting out in violence, maybe I just need to go ahead and pick up the phone and be open. I need accountability. We all need accountability. So that would be one thing. Realize seeking forgiveness and reconciliation. I've been there, done something, or maybe you're having a hard time forgiving somebody. You know, you fall out with a friend. You got to humble yourself to make amends. Things might not always be the same way because it could have been a seasonal situation, but you don't want anything in your heart to disconnect you with the the anointing of the Lord, with the 
the the power of the father in moving in and through you in your life. And, you know, part of the disciples prayers, you, you know, we forgive as we forgive, you know, others here on earth. We want to forgive people. We want to have a forgiving heart. We want to make sure that we're peacemakers because we're blessed when we are. You know, we don't want to continue to have the stress anytime we think that name of a person and then all these emotions of anger, frustration just are in our hearts. And it just dictates our day and it makes it heavy. Who wants that? Who wants to live like that? Nobody wants that. We want freedom. God said, he who the sun set free is free indeed. So after a following out with a friend, humble yourself. If you can make amends, make amends. But the word does say if you have an audit against somebody, go to that person. You know, share your heart in love, in humility, in openness. And again, you may not ever have a restoration of where you were, but at least you're open and, and you're free. You can be free. So think about in your reflection, who do I need to forgive or seek forgiveness from to maintain a heart with alignment? Was it an ex-husband? Was it a parent? Is it a child? Is it a co-worker? Is it a manager? Is it myself? <laughs> Another transformational reflection point, align daily decisions with God's word. Before you even get up out of wherever you are to begin your day, you know, seek God. Thank you, Lord, for this day. This is the day you've made, God. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it, God. I, 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 I say, what do you want for me out and in and through me today? Your will be done here on earth in my body, in my choices, in my thought processes, and what I hear, see, and do, and act upon. What is it? You know, maybe it's a career choice you need to make. Some daily decision on how to run the house. You have to think, does this decision, does this choice honor God? Am I in alignment with what God has told me? You know, those are some of the reflections. Do my choices reflect faith or I'm just acting out in fear? You know, I'm not going to, you know, resign from this position because I, you know, I need this paycheck, even though you're not really making it. You know, God can supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. That's where faith is, truly. I'm not saying to, to leave a job without your, you know, income or whatever. But what I am saying, because you got to really do for what God is telling you to do, is be obedient. Have an open heart of obedience. Ask God, what do I need to do in my daily choices, in my daily decisions? What is it? Where, where do you want me to do? What is next? The Holy Spirit lead and guide me. That's what the, our Holy Spirit resident friend is for. And then what changes can I make to live in alignment with God's word? It's a reflection, I would say, for us all to do daily, moment by moment. How can I walk in faith, Lord? Let me have a heart of obedience of faith. The other thing towards that is let go of control. Yep. Because to get to that point of choices and decisions, we got to really let go of control. I mean, maybe you feel anxious about your future. If maybe you are laid off or getting to be laid off or you got a re bad report from the medical provider, you know, or you, you caught your person in adultery or maybe you've committed, you know, that type of behavior. When you're feeling anxious about your future, you really got to surrender your plans to God's timing. Whatever the season is in your life, you've got to ask God, hey, let me go ahead and just relinquish control. Let me just let it go. Let go and let God, right? Just let go. And God has a perfect timing for you. He'll work it out for you. So you can think about in your reflection, what am I holding on to that I need to release to God's control? Really get honest. Look in the mirror of your life. Get real with it. In order for transformation to start, it's, it's doing the work to actively do your self-reflections and, and come real with it with God. 
I mean, we could talk to our friends and everybody else and give a good game of what's going on. But when it comes to it, when we're in our time of just us and us and us with God, we got to be real with it. What is really going on? The other thing in your time of transformation is serve others selflessly. You know, look for opportunities to serve maybe at your local fellowship or in your community or even in your family or your neighbors. Just, you know, there are going to sometimes come opportunities to just be of help. A lot of times to not so much concentrate on our current situation or current crisis. The opening is God will allow you to be there for somebody else. And then your pain becomes a purpose. You know, and you stop kind of dwelling on all the stuff that isn't right in your life. But then God gives you the opportunity to see how you could be right for other people's lives. And in that that process, he's working all things out for your good. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, to them who are called according to his purposes. So, you know, how can you serve others? How can you be the hands and the feet of Jesus in your daily life. And then cultivate a thankful heart. We, we've talked about this before, and that's really the basis of the thankful revolution and all things give thanks. Find gratitude in even the most challenging times, focusing on God's goodness. What can you do as we reflect on this particular key point? What can we do to practice gratitude daily, to keep our hearts open to God's transformation? Even if it's just before you put your feet on the floor or before you get up and do start anything of your day, you just open up with, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Even if it's just as small as that, you know how significant that is to just concentrate on, Lord, I thank you. You may think it's small, but it's great in the sight of God because your willingness, your openness for transformational change with an attitude of focus on Thanksgiving, that's a key right there. Practice that. How else can you practice gratitude daily? In all things, give God thanks, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then, of course, make time for prayer and study. You know, it's thy word. God's word that we hide in our hearts so we don't sin against him, his way, so that we can be aligned with God's intentions for this world that we live in. So we got to make time for prayer and study. We've got to dedicate each time of our day a a segment, just a portion, even if it's 10% out of your 24 hours of the day, give give God time. Give him first precedence. You know, if you give God first precedence, you know all the other stuff is going to work out well in your day. If you just set aside first precedence, Lord, I thank you. What, do you. what do you have me to know today? Give me your word. It doesn't have to be a, a in-depth Bible study. However, It can be a message, a word, something that God gives you to dwell upon because we got to think on him, his goodness. That gets us through the day. So dedicate some time each morning to pray and study the Bible, drawing closer to God's heart. And your reflection point is, am I making space for God's voice in my life? Really? Am I making space? We make space for everything else, for that marathon Netflix series we want to see, for that movie we wanted to go, for that restaurant that we want to go eat at, for that book we want to read, for that game we want to go see of our children, for that time of getting my nails done, my hair done, for that time of going to the barbershop, oh, for getting that new car, for for everything else we're making space for. But when, when do we make space for God, really? Do we wake up in the morning with our eyes and our minds and our hearts stayed on Jesus? Huh? Do we? And then finally, we got to embrace accountability. That's the whole thing. David had to really come to the end of himself and embrace accountability when Nathan came before him and called him out on the carpet. So find that wise person, that wise counsel, ask God. Hey, lead me to an accountability person. 
or group of people. You know, share your goals and struggles with a mentor or a friend, a trusted one, not somebody who is out there to manipulate you or to, to dash your dreams or be a part of the cancel culture. Yeah, don't be going on social media trying to find people to be a, you know, your accountability partners and you post it to everybody to see your goals and dreams and then boom, you get dashed because that's not their goals or dreams. So, of course, they can't align with what's in your heart. So just take it to God first and ask him to reveal to you who and who can be brought into your life. And, and I assure you, God will start bringing people into your lives, groups, communities into your lives to, to, to align with your heart and your goals so that you can get there. Because God is 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 wanting you to be prosperous. You know, he said, beloved, I wish above all else you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul, your mind, will, and emotions prosper. That's his goal for you. He wants us to have a good expecting it, something beautiful, life in that life, more abundant. So don't you know he's concerned about what concerns you? In your reflection, you can think, well, who can I invite into my life to encourage and guide me in obedience to God? You know, who? And God will, will give you the answers. As we start wrapping it up in this message today, we're thinking about the, the framework that God gave me out of the aftermath from my own personal life and death experience. And if you haven't heard it or seen it, of course, it's all throughout the Thankful Revolution blog post and on the YouTube messages I've shared before. But at the Thankful Revolution, we do embrace the, the CPR plus now framework. It, it guides us to transformation. And what is CPR plus now, you ask? <laughs> Thank you for asking. The first part is crisis, C. And that's really the place of our brokenness, where we recognize our desperate need of intervention. When I had my life and death situation, I was in a crisis. I mean, literally, you've got somebody in your home that you didn't invite that's trying to choke you out, trying to kill you, do some, un uh, some things against you and your body and your life. I mean, you're in a crisis. You're broken. You need God's intervention. We recognize that. And, I've, you know, wherever you're at currently, whatever your crisis is, you got to just say, God, I'm broken here. I can't do I can't do this anymore. I can't live like this anymore. I need your intervention. And at that particular moment, even if it's a, a, didn't even speak it out your mouth, but a prayer of your heart. There could be an epiphany that happens, a crossroad. And that's the moment of pivot where we choose to turn towards God, surrendering our lives to his plans, his will, his purpose. God will give us the option. He said, choose you this day. Who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve him and his life? Are you going to serve the enemy and his lies? You know, if you think about the word lies, and life, there's an F in the middle of it, L-I-F-E or L-I, no F, E, and S. You know, F in the middle of it to me means faith. How are you going to move your faith forward to really go for life and for truth instead of if you remove faith out of your life, out of your decisions, then you're going to continue to succumb to the lies and you just will be sealed there in that situation of lies, of hopelessness. So we got to make a pivot and then that will lead us to our rebirthing, a renewed life, <laughs> cleansed by God and filled with his Holy Spirit resonant. Thank you, Lord, ready to obey and be transformed. And then with the faithful biblical foundations that's in the plus of our life, because for me, I had to base my life on his biblical foundations, his word of wisdom, his counsel from his word that remains truthful, period. That will then lead into the new beginnings is our 
witness, the next level, the paradigm shift to be able to have life in our life more abundant here on earth as it is in heaven. Daily, God offers us new opportunities to live as witnesses for him. That's the representative of the journey that we walk on a daily basis. So our framework is just designed to help us live not only through the CPR plus now methodology, but to get to the five R's. I, I come from teachers and I always like the R's, you know, reading, write, arithmetic. Well, for this particular transfer, transformational message and for the foundational messages out of the Thankful Revolution Legacy Group. We have the R's that are reclaiming our voice, renewing our minds, reminding ourselves of God's promises to be able to rebound from a traumatic situation, to resuscitate our our, our life into faithful actions and to <sighs> be able to breathe again. Yes. Let's take a pause for the cause. (sighs) Breathe again. Yes. Yes. Be able to get a resuscitation of God's breath into our body for hope, for life, of peace, of joy, of faith. And then that leads us to be able to rewrite our testimonies. Our personal life story doesn't have to remain in gloom and doom and hopelessness and stagnation and just death, succumbing to lies. We can take control. We can take control. We were born here originally the brainchild of God created in his image to dominate on this planet, to be in a posture of positiveness, of dominion, to reproduce and multiply, to be able to walk in a way where we have a voice reclaimed to proclaim his goodness, his good news messages, not only for everybody, but first starting for ourselves, to renew our minds, to be reborn into something that is joyous, full of peace and hope and joy so that we can have a resuscitated life. We we may have flatlined, I flatlined after my situation. That aftermath was hell. And sometimes we might be in hell right now, flatlining, and we need a, a, a charge. We need somebody to just res- help us re- resuscitate it back to life out of death so that we can reclaim our voice, renew our power, rebound from traumatic life experiences to rewrite our stories. And this, if we, you know, concentrate on this, then we can live life more abundantly as Jesus promised, thinking better, being better, achieving better, here on earth as it is in heaven, his kingdom come here on earth in our lives. That's the prayer of the disciple prayer as it is reflected in heaven. So I pray, Father God, thank you for this journey of transformation. Yes, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy that wakes up every morning with us and wraps itself around us in our daily lives and what we desire, we we truly just desire to have a life of transformation where our heart is just yielded to you, Lord God, having a heart transplant, literally, to be one of obedience to your will, your ways, your, your word. Help us each day, God, to follow your principles, your truth, to be empowered, Holy Spirit, by you being the resident guide and navigator Help us to have an ear in tune to listen to you, the voice of the good shepherd, and and close down everything, all the ear gates, all the eye gates that just would distract us, deceive us, cause roadblocks, cause disillusionment, depressions, just cause us to fail and just not live in abundance and and intentional purpose that you born us into this life. You created us in your image to be and to live. God, we are your royal priesthood, a chosen generation. We're supposed to proclaim your good news message, your marvelous light. God, let it work in us first so that we can do that that you've said in your word to do. 
<sighs> renew our hearts, God, strengthen us in our spirits, guide our steps. Father God, we just give you glory. Thank you for this word today. Let it not just be a word on deaf ears, but God, we proclaim it. We speak it out to be in good soil, in hearts that's flourishing, that's being open and willing for your transformational power to be taken up in our lives and enacted and walking out in full fruition. God, we thank you for this. We thank you. We expect the changes. We expect the transformations. We expect the testimonies, the overcoming prosperity that's coming forth from your word. God, we expect it this day. As it is in heaven, let it be in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, we pray and praise you and worship you. Amen. So, beloved family, I want to just thank you for spending a little bit of time with me today. You know, remember, we are here to reclaim, renew, remind, resuscitate, rewrite through the CPR Plus Now framework. We, we want you to keep your faith. We want you to be renewed. We want you to be reborn out of desperate situations into joy and peace and love and marvelous lighted pathways of intentional purpose and prosperity, a paradigm shift, one that you you know, had to start imagining for yourself. You had to start thinking, oh, okay, yeah, that's what you really want for me, Lord. I'm aligned. I'm humbled. I'm yielded. I'm going for that. That's what I'm going for. I'm not going to remain in that lie. I'm going to take my faith, put it back in that word, and I'm going to have life and my life more abundant. Yes, yes, yes. So until next time, I want y'all to be blessed, be a blessing. Again, Shalom, Tiva, Atifa. I'm Miriam. I'm saying let's go live royally. Let's be the chosen ambassadors of God's kingdom. And again, you can reach me through the Thankful Revolution because we do need you to continue to stay in tune with us. Continue to subscribe to this YouTube channel. You know, hit me up on Facebook at the Thankful Revolution under my name, Miriam S. Stevens. I'm on LinkedIn under my name as well um, with the CPR plus now logo in my heading. I have this podcast as you'll tune into on YouTube. We're going to have an upcoming event, which I want to share with you called We Are Royalty, Embracing Our Heavenly Identity. We're going to have a little bit of teaser in December around the 14th. We want you to realize that we can live as if we're royalty because we are. We need to put ourselves in that mindset. You know, we are that royal generation, that, that priesthood that God called us to be here on earth. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. It's our right. This is what God created us for, to take dominion, to be fruitful, to live in abundance, to share his good news message, to to be in alignment with his will. So we need to act as if we're doing that right now, even though, okay, so maybe your eyes, maybe your circumstances is gloomy right now. So what? We all have a choice to make. Are we going to concentrate on what we feel is the lack? Are we just going to thank you, Lord? Thank God for what is the growth? What is the opportunities? What is that? that he's already provided for us. He said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and, and glory. And if you just ask him, you know, in faith, he'll give it to you. He'll provide that. You just got to walk as if you already got what you want. You think about how everybody else may have started on a journey at point A. And now you look at their lives and you're like, wow. I knew when they were. Well, they made a decision. They started at point A with a decision, with a mindset to say, I'm going to be what it is that I desire. And I'm going to walk like that now, right now, even though the journey may take three years, even though the journey may take a year, even though the journey may take five months, whatever the time period of that process for your journey, I'm it right now. I'm that millionaire. I'm that slim person. I'm that person that has my own business. 
I am it now. And so that's your royalty. That's your right. That's your inheritance. So we're going to talk about that in our upcoming webs. Uh, I call it a virtual victory masterclass and webinar and party. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have fun music. You know, I love some good music. And we're just going to have, you know, transformational life changing messages to come forth. Reminding us of who we are in Christ, that we are overcomers, what our identity is. Because, you know, if you you listen to the world's reasoning, you know, and what I mean by the world, I mean, you turn on the news, you 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 look on your 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 social media feeds. You can get the cancel culture my, mindset and mentality to just, you know, soak into your spirit. And that stuff does not give you life. I'm telling you, it dashes dreams real quick. So we need to just start brainwashing our minds, renewing our minds, as the word of God says, Romans, so that we can now walk in the royalty that we're called to walk in. And of course, I always invite you to find out what I'm doing. If you even want to have one-on-one discovery times with me where we can talk and maybe even lead into a more committed type situation for your own personal growth and transition, Hey, check me out. I'm at the thankful revolution legacy group.com. I'm here for you. I'm just here for that. I need you. You need me. We're going to walk this walk together, this journey together in life, life more abundant for better, for transformation, for joy, for peace, to be out of mess into bless, right? Ooh, out of mess into bless. That's what we're going to concentrate on. And then I have additional websites, Thankful Revolution Legacy Group LLC.com and the regular Thankful Revolution.com. I'm on TikTok even. I only have one video, but I'm going to make more at one, just the number one, the Thankful Revolution. So again, I want to share my, my favorite scripture trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Don't lean on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge Him. He directs our path. That's Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 and 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Just read the whole Proverbs 3. Thank you again for staying connected, for keeping the faith. Uh, remember your chosen generation, your royalty. You're, you're beloved by God. We're going to take this journey together. You're not alone. I see you. I hear you. You know, you have a divine purpose. You weren't here by choice, by chance but by choice, because you knew in your heart of hearts, you desired to have that truly life of obedience and a heart of obedience, something I've prayed, God, transplant my heart, take out my filthy heart and transplant it with your heart so I can be aligned by your word, your ways, so I can be new, so I can have you, so I can be just, just better just better. Don't we want better? Yeah, I know I do. So beloved, thank you so much for your time today, for being here, for staying with me just a little bit. I love you so much. <laughs> Blessings to you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Rejoice in him. Yes, this is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will be glad. I will be glad and rejoice in it and rejoice in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Mm -mm -mm. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Yes. Yeah, I know I'm acting silly today. But hey, sometimes we just got to have fun and, and encourage ourselves. And regardless of what's going on, we just going to keep praising God. Have that mindset. Think about what we're thinking about here. At the Thankful Revolution Legacy Group, LLC, we want you to have better. Love you so much. I'll breathe. All right. 
talk to you next time. Stay tuned for our next episode and the Think Thankful Turnaround Thursday. That's going to be coming down the pike this week. Blessings. Bye-bye.